Welcome back to Immortal News Family, your trusted daily destination where we honor legacies and cherish memories. Our thoughts are with Morgan Stewart as she mourns the loss of her father and with the Star Wars community as it commemorates Ray Stevenson. We'll be covering these stories in our news section. Your trust and connection to our content are invaluable. If our stories resonate with you, please give a thumbs up and express your appreciation using our thanks button. For heartfelt commemorations and authentic updates, ensure you're subscribed to Immortal News. Together, we remember and celebrate. Number 19, Nicole McGuire, a digital luminary gone too soon. Nicole McGuire, the vibrant Glaswegian YouTuber and cherished contributor to BBC The Social, sadly passed away suddenly at the age of 26 on September 30th. Recognized online as Nicoleo, she carved a niche for herself discussing gaming and her fervent passion for K-pop. Her effervescent videos and captivating editing skills garnered a vast following. Her heartbroken mother, Laura McGuire, referred to Nicole as her shining star, expressing that life would never be the same without her radiant presence. Nicole's brother, Sean McGuire, in a poignant tribute, wrote about the profound void her passing has left and hoped to preserve and amplify her online legacy. Remembered by her girlfriend Alicia and countless friends and followers, Nicole was a beacon of joy and positivity. As a mark of respect, fans attending the Five Seconds of Summer concert in Glasgow have been urged to don pink in her memory. Many have shared their sorrow, highlighting the luminosity Nicole brought to the world. One friend eloquently stated, You brought so much light to people's lives. Rest in peace, Angel. Nicole's legacy will undoubtedly continue to inspire and bring warmth to many. Number 18. John Kennedy, a powerful presence in symphonic black metal. John Kennedy, esteemed guitarist of Cradle of Filth, tragically passed away at 44 due to a car accident near Broughton, Wales on September 27. Joining the band in 1994, Kennedy's tenure was brief yet impactful. While he played on the original recording of Dusk and Her Embrace, the album faced label disputes. However, in 2016, this version saw the light of day as Dusk and Her Embrace, showcasing Kennedy's unmatched talent. Post Cradle of Filth, John dedicated himself to Hecate enthroned, showcasing his distinct vocal style reminiscent of Danny Filth. He lent his prowess to albums like The Slaughter of Innocents, A Requiem for the Mighty, and Dark Requiems, and Unsilent Massacre. The rock community mourns the loss of such a dynamic force. Number 17, Jeff Alessi, a legacy of speed and passion on the track. Jeff Alessi, a former esteemed supercross and motocross rider, passed away suddenly on October 2nd at the young age of 34. A professional racer whose career highlights include competing in the prestigious Monster Energy Cup, Alessi's impact on the racing circuit was palpable. His untimely death was confirmed by a close friend who shared a heartfelt message on Instagram, recounting fond memories and expressing deep sorrow. There are murmurs suggesting a heart attack as the cause, fueled by an unverified claim on a German blog, speedweek.com. However, the family has yet to confirm the specifics surrounding Jeff's passing. The racing community, friends and fans alike, are left in shock, with many paying tribute to the young racer online, recalling his skills, passion, and the kindness he exhibited off the track. Regardless of the circumstances, one thing is clear. Jeff Alessi's passion for the sport and his genuine camaraderie with those around him have left a lasting mark. The racing world mourns the loss of a promising talent, while those close to him remember a friend who brought joy, laughter, and inspiration. Number 16. Jacqueline Lisa Dark a resonating voice of Australian opera. Jacqueline Lisa Dark, an Australian operatic mezzo-soprano of incredible talent, passed away on the 3rd of October at the age of 55, following a battle with a rare form of cancer. Born in Ballarat around 1967-1968, Dark's passion for music was evident early on, leading her to the University of Ballarat and then to the Victorian College of the Arts, where she achieved first-class honors in opera. Throughout her illustrious career, Dark graced the stages of the Vienna State Opera, Opera Australia, and the Victorian State Opera, bringing to life roles such as Giovanna in Rigoletto and Frica in Der Ring des Nibelungen. A versatile performer, her repertoire spanned opera, music theater, cabaret, and concert platforms. 
Dark's performances as Herodias in Salome and Donna Elvira in Don Giovanni were particularly noteworthy, earning her the Green Room Award for Outstanding Principal Female in Opera. In addition to her solo performances, Dark collaborated with renowned groups, including the Australian National Academy of Music, the Royal Philharmonic Society, and the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. Her contribution to the world premiere of Lindy and Summer of the Seventeenth Doll further underscored her impact on the Australian opera scene. As a beacon of talent, dedication, and passion, Jacqueline Lisa Dark leaves behind a legacy that will echo in the halls of opera for generations to come. Number 15. Delina McLean, A Symphony of Music, Faith, and Education Lena McLean, the prolific American composer, educator, author, and pastor, passed away on October 4th at the age of 95. Born in Atlanta, Georgia, McLean's early exposure to gospel music, fostered by her uncle Thomas A. Dorsey, set the tone for a life dedicated to merging European and African-American musical traditions. With degrees from Spelman College and the American Conservatory of Music, McLean left an indelible mark on the Chicago public school system, most notably at Kenwood Academy, dubbed the woman who launched a thousand careers by Chicago Tribune's Howard Reich. Her students included musical giants such as R. Kelly, Jennifer Hudson, and Chaka Khan. Beyond teaching, her artistic repertoire was vast, composing over 400 musical pieces, including her renowned opera, O oh Freedom, which graced the stage of Carnegie Hall in 1983. With her husband, Nathaniel, McLean founded the acclaimed McLean Opera Company in the 1950s, recognized as the nation's leading small opera company. Her commitment to community service was evident in her religious life. In 1981, she founded the Holy Vessel Baptist Church, dedicating her life to outreach programs that supported the Hyde Park community. Survived by her children, Nathaniel Jr. and Beverly, McLean's legacy is a harmonious blend of education, music, and faith. Her contributions to the world of music, the arts, and community will resonate for generations to come. Number 14. Joe Christopher, a stalwart of baseball's golden era. Joe Christopher, the esteemed American professional baseball outfielder who graced Major League Baseball with his talent from 1959 to 1966, passed away at the age of 87 in his Edgewood, Maryland home on October 3rd. Best known for his tenure with the Pittsburgh Pirates, New York Mets, and Boston Red Sox, he left an indelible mark on the game. Achieving glory with the Pirates, Christopher was part of the legendary team that clinched the 1960 World Series. His versatility made him an invaluable utility player, as he adeptly filled roles in the outfield and made significant contributions during the World Series. Christopher's prowess reached its zenith with the New York Mets in 1964, showcasing career-high stats, a .300 batting average, 16 home runs, and 76 runs batted ins, among others. Notably, he broke up the no-hit bid of Cincinnati Reds pitcher Jim Maloney, etching that moment in the annals of baseball history. Beyond MLB, Christopher's commitment to baseball was evident, as he played winter baseball in places like Puerto Rico, Mexico, and the Dominican Republic achieving accolades like being a four-time stolen base leader in the Puerto Rican Winter League. His legacy, both on and off the field, remains a testament to his passion and dedication to the sport. Number 13. Patrick Henry Hayes, a visionary leader and pillar of North Little Rock. Patrick Henry Hayes, former North Little Rock mayor and esteemed member of the Arkansas House of Representatives, has passed away at the age of 76 after a courageous battle with cancer. Born in 1947 in North Little Rock, Hayes was an embodiment of dedication to his hometown. A graduate of NLR High School and the University of Arkansas, he began his journey in public service as an assistant city attorney, later ascending to the position of North Little Rock's mayor in 1989. Under his 24-year leadership, the city flourished, witnessing iconic developments such as the Dickey Stevens Park, Simmons Bank Arena, and the renowned Burns Park. The city's gratitude for Hayes' unwavering dedication was evident with the inauguration of the Patrick H. Hayes Senior Citizen Center in 2003. Beyond his mayoral tenure, 
Hayes continued to serve his community in various capacities and practice law. A symbol of resilience and commitment, Hayes will be fondly remembered not just for his professional achievements, but for his warm-hearted nature. He leaves behind his wife Linda, their daughter, and grandchildren, along with a city that thrived under his leadership. Number 12. James Jordan, the maverick voice of Opera's Underground. James Jordan, founder of the influential Opera Zine and website Parterrebox, passed away at 69 in his Sunnyside, Queens residence on October 2nd cause of death remains to be determined. Born on August 6, 1954 in Opelousas, Louisiana, Jordan evolved from a stage director to an irreverent opera critic. His journey began in the East Village of the 1990s inspired by punk music zines. With a mix of text and magazine cutouts, Jordan introduced the world to Parterre Box in December 1993, the self-proclaimed queer opera zine. Not just a publication, it was a movement that celebrated opera in all its grandeur and absurdity. Covering news, providing critiques, and hosting fervent discussions, the zine eventually migrated online in 1996, further expanding its influence. Over time, Parterre Box transitioned from an underground zine discreetly distributed at the Met to a revered source, with Jordan recognized for his contributions to the opera world. James leaves behind two brothers, John and Justin, and a legacy that will resonate with opera enthusiasts for generations. Number 11. Chuck Rowe, Tennessee's track titan and pioneer of integration. Chuck Rowe, the renowned Tennessee track and field coaching legend, passed away at the age of 92 in Ocoee, Florida on October 3rd. Born in suburban Chicago, Rowe's athletic journey began at Southern Miss, leading him to coach successes at Hattiesburg High School and then Furman, achieving their first-ever Southern Conference Championship in 1961. In 1963, Rove commenced his transformative stint with Tennessee, with his teams clinching an astounding 21 consecutive SEC titles and a record of 138-2 in dual meets. Beyond the track, Rowe was instrumental in integrating UT sports in 1967, making it possible for black athletes like Audrey Hardy and Lester McLean to don the Tennessee colors. Rowe's belief in multi-sport talent also led to Tennessee's legacy as wide receiver U. For his contributions, Rowe was honored multiple times, including his recent induction into the University of Tennessee Athletics Hall of Fame in 2023. His legacy stands as a testament to his commitment to excellence and inclusivity in sports. Number 10. Wayne Comer a lifetime of dedication to Major League Baseball. Wayne Comer, an accomplished Major League Baseball outfielder, passed away on October 4th at the age of 79. Born in Shenandoah, Virginia in 1944, Comer demonstrated his passion for sports during his time at Page County High School, where he excelled in baseball, basketball, and football. His professional baseball journey began in 1962 when he was signed by the Washington Senators. Over the next decade, he played for major league teams, including the Detroit Tigers, Seattle Pilots slash Milwaukee Brewers, and Washington Senators. Among his numerous achievements, the 1969 season stood out when Comer led the Seattle Pilots in runs scored and also led the American League in several outfielder categories. He was also renowned for his memorable pinch hit single in the 1968 World Series achieving a 1.000 batting average. Apart from his on-field accolades, Comer's off-field behavior was captured in Jim Booten's best-selling book, Ball Four, where he was portrayed as a fiery and feisty character. In his later years, Comer dedicated himself to coaching, inspiring young athletes at Spotswood High School and then at Page County High School in Virginia. Married to Joyce Nauman in 1963, Comer was the proud father of three sons. The baseball community remembers Wayne Comer not only for his contributions on the field, but for his impactful role as a coach and mentor. He leaves behind a legacy of passion, dedication, and excellence in the world of baseball. Number 9. Giannis Ioannidis, pillar of Greek basketball and renowned political figure. Giannis Ioannidis, celebrated as the most accomplished Greek professional basketball club head coach, passed away on October 4th. 
born on February 26, 1945. In Thessaloniki, Ioannidis' basketball career began with Eris in 1960, where he became the second highest scorer in club history. Transitioning to coaching, he led teams like Aris and Olympiakos to numerous titles, making an indelible mark with 12 Greek League championships, six Greek Cups, and memorable EuroLeague performances. Beyond the basketball court, Ioannidis was also a prominent figure in Greek politics. Joining the New Democracy Party, he served as a member of parliament and deputy minister of culture responsible for sports. Despite challenges in his political career, his dedication to Greek society remained evident. Ioannidis's legacy stands as a testament to his passion for both sports and public service. His contributions to basketball especially will be cherished and remembered by fans across Greece and the broader basketball community. Number 8. Roy T. Richter, Upholding Law, Order and Dedication Throughout a Lifetime Roy T. Richter, esteemed former NYPD union head and respected attorney, passed away at the age of 56 on October 4th. A dedicated servant to his city, Richter devoted 33 years to the NYPD, culminating his esteemed tenure as a deputy chief. Known for his leadership and negotiation skills, he served as president of the NYPD Captains Endowment Association for 12 years, advocating for the welfare of over 2,000 active and retired uniformed commanders. Among his many achievements was securing a 10% compensation boost for members. Beyond his law enforcement duties, Richter was an accomplished attorney and a pivotal figure in community initiatives like District Attorney Alvin Bragg's Task Force. A graduate of St. Francis College and Fordham University School of Law, he was deeply rooted in education and community service. Richter's legacy extends to his personal life where he cherished his family, especially honoring his father, a World War II Navy veteran. Fondly remembered by peers and colleagues, Roy T. Richter's commitment to service and his positive impact on the lives of many will be remembered and celebrated. He leaves behind his father, wife, Marianne Bifulco, and three daughters. Number 7. Harriet Pattison, Architectural Visionary and Louis Kahn's Muse Harriet Pattison, an esteemed landscape architect and notable muse to the legendary architect Louis Kahn, passed away on October 3rd at her residence in Newtown Square at the age of 95. The youngest of seven children born to William Lawrence and Bonnie Abbott, Pattison's academic journey spanned the University of Chicago, Yale School of Drama, University of Edinburgh, and Curtis Institute of Music. Her life took a definitive turn after meeting Louis Kahn in 1958, who became both a romantic and professional partner, guiding her into landscape architecture. After her apprenticeship under Dan Kiley, Pattison earned her MA from the University of Pennsylvania in 1967. Her influential projects include the Kimball Art Museum, Franklin D. Roosevelt Four Freedoms Park, and the Hershey Company's headquarters. Their intertwined relationship was beautifully captured by their son, Nathaniel Kahn, in My Architect, A Son's Journey. A testament to her remarkable contribution to the field, Pattison was honored as a fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects at 87. Her legacy stands as an inspiration for designers and architects worldwide. Number 6. Brad Tippett, a respected figure in junior hockey and Regina's beloved coach Brad Tippett, the former Regina Pats coach, and a prominent figure in junior hockey, passed away at the age of 64 on September 29th. Born in Regina in 1959, Tippett's passion for hockey was evident early on, playing with the Prince Albert Raiders and later securing a scholarship with the University of Michigan. His coaching career saw him at the helm of various teams, most notably the Regina Pats, where he served before the 1989-90 Western Hockey League season. Under his guidance, the Pats achieved an impressive 102-100-325 record and reached the playoffs in his initial seasons. Later, Tippett took his expertise to the Peninsula Panthers of the Vancouver Island Junior Hockey League, earning the league's Coach of the Year accolade for the 2021-22 season. Beyond his coaching accomplishments, Tippett was a 1998 inductee into the Prince Albert Hall of Fame and the elder sibling of renowned NHL coach Dave Tippett. 
The cause of his death remains undisclosed. The hockey community mourns the loss of a true legend both on and off the rink. Number 5. Professor Arthur Burns A pillar of historical academia and dedication, Professor Arthur Burns, a stalwart of the historical profession, passed away on the 3rd of October at the age of 87. Esteemed for his scholarly contributions at King's College London, Burns was also deeply involved with the Royal Historical Society, serving significant roles, including as literary director and vice president. Instrumental in shaping the national curriculum reforms for history studies, he exemplified patience and resilience in the face of challenges. Beyond the Royal Historical Society, Burns furthered historical academia through initiatives like the Georgian Papers Program and the Clergy of the Church of England, Database 1540 to 1835. A beacon for many in the historical discipline, his enduring passion will be profoundly missed. Sympathies extend to his family, students, colleagues, and vast circle of friends during this somber time. Number 4. Johnny Sweetum, McNeese's stalwart coach and unforgettable voice. Johnny Sweetum, the heart and soul of McNeese State University Athletics, passed away on October 1st night at the age of 80 in a local care facility. Born in Birmingham, Alabama in 1942, Sweetum made Lake Charles his home and McNeese his lifelong commitment. As a 1966 graduate, he played baseball and later served as head coach, leading the team to a record 34 wins in 1977. Beyond the diamond, he took on the mantle of football assistant coach, administrator of Burton Coliseum, and ultimately the color announcer for the Cowboys football broadcasts. His voice resonated in the broadcast booth for over two decades, often alongside Tom Hofer. Beyond his many roles at McNeese, Swidem was an artist, designing significant university decals. His dedication and unmatched cowboy spirit will forever be cherished. Johnny is survived by numerous family members and leaves behind a legacy of passion, leadership, and unwavering love for McNeese. Number 3. Georgia Dooley, Chronicler of Cultural Evolution and Enduring Legacy Georgia Dooley, a revered reporter for the New York Times, passed away at 90 in the Bronx on October 4th. For over three decades, she documented societal changes with meticulous precision. Starting in the early 1970s, Dali offered invaluable insights on topics like the effects of no-fault divorces on women, the rise of the non-nuclear family, and the lavish lifestyles of the Nouvelle Society. Her compassionate reportage shone a light on the AIDS crisis, memorializing its devastating impact. Born Georgia Milburn Comstock in Newark, New Jersey, in 1933, she began her journalism career in her 30s. Survived by her children Mark and Reagan, Georgia's compelling narratives remain a testament to her keen observational prowess and unwavering commitment to truth. Breaking news. News 1. In a heartfelt Instagram post on Tuesday, TV personality Morgan Stewart revealed the passing of her father, Herbert Edward Stewart. The 35-year-old, known for her appearance on Rich Kids of Beverly Hills, shared an evocative photo of her father, an esteemed architect estimated to be 80, taken in a scenic hiking backdrop. Of all the photos I could have chosen or included, something about this one has brought me momentary peace, Stewart penned admitting her inability to fully brace herself for this profound loss. Herbert, owner of the construction firm H. Construct, Inc., had significantly influenced the affluent upbringing of his daughter. The post drew an outpouring of support, with celebrities like Stasi Schroeder, Lala Kent, and Nina Parker offering condolences. This somber announcement comes just over a year after Morgan celebrated the birth of her second child with husband Jordan McGraw. The couple, who welcomed their daughter Roe in February 2021, expanded their family with a son, Gray Oliver McGraw, in February 2022. News 2. The world of Star Wars and fans of the show Ahsoka bid a heartfelt farewell to actor Ray Stevenson, who played the riveting character of Balin Skull. As Stevenson's last scenes aired on this week's finale, the grief of his passing in May 2023 was palpable. Stevenson, 58, had portrayed Skull with such depth that the enigmatic Dark Jedi's journey became a central plot point of the series. Ivana Sakno, who played Skull's apprentice, 
took to Instagram, referencing the mythological chase between Wolf's soul and Manny in her tribute. Rosario Dawson, the show's protagonist and other co-stars like Diana Lee Inosanto and Natasha Liu Bordizzo, poured out their sentiments, encapsulating the depth of Stevenson's impact both on and off screen. The Star Wars community's official tribute remembered Stevenson as a remarkable blend of talent, warmth, and genuine heart. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Diahan Carroll, Breaking Barriers and Shaping a Legacy in Hollywood Diahan Carroll, the trailblazing African-American actress and singer, passed away on October 4, 2019, at her home in West Hollywood, California, at the age of 84. She succumbed to cancer, a disease she battled courageously since her diagnosis in 1997. Born in the Bronx, New York City in 1935, Carol's talents shone from a young age. She rose to prominence in iconic films like Carmen Jones and Porgy and Bess, and received an Academy Award nomination for Claudine. Her role in the television series Julia was revolutionary. She became the first African-American actress to headline a series in a non-stereotypical role, earning a Golden Globe for her portrayal. Later, she graced the screen in Dynasty as the glamorous Dominique Devereaux. Her achievements weren't limited to the screen. Carol was the first African-American woman to win a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical in 1962. Beyond her illustrious career, her personal life was marked by love, challenges, and resilience. She married four times and had a daughter, Suzanne Kay. Diahan Carroll's legacy is profound. She broke barriers, challenged norms, and paved the way for generations of artists. Her contributions to stage and screen remain unparalleled, and she will forever be remembered as a true icon. The number one, Loretta Lynn, the voice of authenticity in country music. Loretta Lynn, the indomitable voice of country music known for her genuine storytelling and undaunted spirit, passed away peacefully on October 4th at her home in 2022. She was 90 years old. Born Loretta Webb in 1932 in Butcher Hollow, Van Leer, Kentucky, Lynn's journey from poverty to stardom served as an inspiration for countless fans. Her raw narratives were unfiltered depictions of real-life experiences. From living in destitution to handling the challenges of early motherhood, marriage, and personal trials, Lynn's song struck a chord with audiences who saw their lives mirrored in her lyrics. Tracks like Don't Come Home A-Drinkin' and You Ain't Woman Enough displayed her characteristic candor. Despite some of her tracks being deemed controversial, Lynn's songs resonated deeply with listeners and became timeless classics. Her profound impact on country music and women's liberation was recognized on multiple fronts. She won three Grammys and numerous accolades from the Academy of Country Music. In 1988, Lynn was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Her groundbreaking hit, Coal Miner's Daughter, became the title for her best-selling memoir and an award-winning biographical film. Her legacy is not just as a singer and songwriter, but as a fierce advocate for authenticity, women's rights, and staying true to oneself. President Barack Obama, upon awarding her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013, praised Lynn for singing what no one wanted to talk about. Loretta Lynn's memory will live on. Her tenacity, combined with her unrivaled talent, ensures that her voice will forever echo in the annals of music history.